Hello, Paul Ellis from The Rick Group here. I'm going to talk to you about our supply chain solution. The Rick Group was established in 2001 and we work with a number of different ERPs globally. Our supply chain solution covers warehouse management and transport management. Our solution is a best of breed and we've been certified with a number of different ERPs on the marketplace. One of the key reasons our solution has done well is because we use a loosely coupled architecture keeping the core clean. Our warehouse management solution and transport management solution is new technology, it's browser based and has an audibility for all users. We have a REST API that helps us integrate with freight solutions for last mile delivery. We have Power BI which does a number of KPI reportings. We have endpoint logic in our system. We're a best of breed warehouse management and transport management solution and we also strongly believe to be GS1 compliant. This allows us to do uh, food tracking or food tracking with a number of different barcodes, SSCs, catch weight, and transport logistics for containers. Contact details are sales at therickgroup.com and feel free to send us more information. So let's go through a quick uh, introduction of our warehouse management solution. You can see here I've been logged in. I've got uh, my version, my web APIs uh, version sitting here. What we have here is some quick pick buttons. So if I go into a quick pick button, that allows the user just to go and have a custom menu there and go straight into the menu that they want to see. So on the home page, Paul can be set up with different custom pick buttons to another user can be set up with different custom pick buttons. So let's just drive into picking. Because this is the majority of what people use, we have a pick order header here. And from the pick order header, what we can do is assign to users and we can assign a priority. Now these are custom drop downs and I'll show you in a minute, but these can be set up to different actions. What we have in these pick order headers is different fields. Now these fields can be turned on and turned off. They can also be rearranged. These different colors mean green is completed and orange or yellow means partially and white means it hasn't been picked. So we have number of lines and then if we want to do zone picking we can have uh, zone IDs and zone picking as well. So that may be you know, chiller freezer or heavy medium light, those type of things. But at the end of the day these pick IDs can have what we call pick labels which uh, are labels for the picker to scan and it will bring up the pick automatically or they can actually just click on the, click on the pick ID and it will bring it up. Now note our solution being browser based works on RF scanners, works on tablet devices and also works on the PC or laptop devices. So let's just drive into a pick here, 2365. And when we drive into the pick there's a few things here that we've just got to get to know. One, I've already can see that uh, we've got our pick order header, we've got the document number or the sales order number or shipment number that it relates to customer. Now you can see here we've added in some more optional fields in our WMS lately and these can be turned on or off. So we can see pick lines, fully pick lines, pick quantity, and when we do things, they will automatically increment and, do, and um, add up. Now, package label represents which label or which carton, which SSCC I'm picking into or packing into. And if I uh, go into generate new SSCC, you'll see that the SSCC number has been generated and it's telling me carton one. Now let's go into an item because at the moment I'm in the tablet view, I can see my release quantity to what to pick, I can see my document number, I've got my description item code in bin location, so it's in bin location order. Also, if I scroll down, you'll see that I have an audit. Nothing's been picked at the moment, but as soon as I pick an item, the audit will be fulfilled as well. Bin locations, release quantity, so this is our RF gun uh, screen and, and the users who are using the RF guns will use this screen. So I need what to pick one. I can see different bin locations. So I can see this item belongs to different bin locations. And if I want to select that bin, different bin location, I can, for instance, pick it out of the A103. I could scan that bin location as well. At the moment, I don't have a scanner attached to my uh, laptop, but I could scan the item. I can scan the bin location. I can do it in different orders. I can force the bin location to be scanned as well. So if I just say it's one, 
Uh, I could also, uh, this carton count is a div, you know, an extra field that we allow for users to say they might be picking you know, uh, one, but it could be two cartons. For instance, it might be multiple unit of measure. Now I've gone into the next item. So as soon as I've picked that item, we'll see, <coughs> we go back to the tablet view. You'll see that this is now green, this first line, it's been fulfilled. And if I show the audit, here it is, the, the audit with a date and time and the actual uh, package label that it's been packaged into. Now this is perfect for EDI purposes when we need to send a, a shipping notice. Now the second part here is we have photos so we can take photos and we also have extra fields. So if your ERP has extra fields that you want to send down to the picker, perhaps there's certain things that you want the picker to pick up. Now these can be renamed. It allows up to five fields. These are just three fields that are turned on. You can have uh, up to five fields and you can rename these to any field you like and this can bring it down to what we uh, call just extra fields from the ERP. Now you can see here I've got picked lines one out of 20 fully picked and picked one out of 20 as well so just uh, happens to be that pick quantity equals the pick number of lines. So this item here I'm just going to say it's a pick line issue. Now I've got short stock so short stock I can uh, I can say save that and when I save that you'll see that the short stock comes up here as well and when I go back to the pick order list it's actually highlighted red. This is to say to the warehouse manager or the operations person that this pick can't go any further because there is a pick line issue. Now you can have a rule on that the, you know, the picker can still go ahead with the, the, the rest of the pick or complete that. You can have a rule that the operations person, the admin user is the only person who can uh, change things here. That is, a, that is a drop down menu we saw before. I just want to show you, we have custom drop down menus in a number of areas, and one of them being the pick line issue. So we can create, or customer can create, their own pick line issues, their own definitions, and if it's active or not. Uh, second part of this is here we have bin code, item code, description. I just want to show you in the user profile settings. I can show or hide whichever field and now note that these user profile settings can be linked to a user profile group so you can have a group such as logistics group or picking group or receiving group and those groups are linked and for these users they can have show or hide and it's per user or per group now the other part to here is you might say I want to move that so for Paul I might want to have description before item code Easy, no problems, you can do that in the user profile settings. The next part uh, to here, let's just go to the goods receiving. So in the goods receiving menu, we can do uh, receiving of a different number of types. Now we've got purchase orders, there's AP reserve invoices. I have also got the ability here in the goods receipt to make new purchase orders for the ERP. And we have return RMA as well. So for instance, if I just show all in RMAs, I can see that there's a number of different RMAs, I might go into this RMA and it's a return authorization, which item I'm expecting back from the customer and an RMA 49, which we have for the customer, they can put that onto the, um, the, the, the box that they're sending and um, you know, that's an RMA 49, so then you've got an ability to, to make sure you're getting the, the right product back from the customer. Here I've got a good receipt, you can see here I've received a, an amount, there's different unit of measures that we expect. Again, I can do extra fields. Uh, what we have here is kitting, it's called license plating. So um, I can create pallets and then track those pallets throughout the warehouse, transfer them, stock take them, pick them, send them to the company. I can also print label, so we could show you that before. So just to go back to here, I can say print label and uh, this one's got a serial code with it. If I go back, um, into that pick before. Let's just go into to this one. And I say print label. You'll say here that I can print the label, which is an SSSC barcode. I can print different carton types. And I've also got instructions and length with height, height and weight pulling automatically down from the ERP solution. So no one has to type anything. Now this is where the last mile delivery comes into it. So if I'm doing integration with freight, 
we want to make sure that the users don't have to type in any information that they don't need to. So we can pull down from the ERP and we have an integration with a different number of carriers and TNT, Australia Post, Border Express, Star Trek, Australia Post, and there's uh, Direct Freight as well. And we have more, including Capital Transport and Kings Freight. So that was the SSC. So sorry to go back to that. Good receiving. So here we have the receiving menu. We can go to the receiving. And then we can do put away where uh, users will create put aways. Now, often one of the things we get asked is, you know, are there put away rules? Yes, there are put away rules. We can create a, a rule for what the default bin we believe is going to be the right bin. And also when you go into the product as well, there's different rules that we can create here. We could have a default bin that it normally goes into and what the active bin. The active bin is the suggested bin we're putting it into because of the logic we've created behind it. So we might say it's a free bin. We might say that's the closest bin free that to, to that default bin uh, and things like that. So let's go to the next part, which is to say stock lookup. So we have picking uh, and you know, from picking, uh, you have the products coming in and going out receiving put away and let's go here I'm just going to search for a product a002 now here's something interesting we've got different barcodes different multipliers we've got the stock on hand for the different bin locations uh, different warehouses now just remember bin abs bin code coin on hand all these columns can be turned on and off i've got the ability to update uh, bin locations from this, uh, this screen as well, we've got bin location reports where we can develop custom things. Now here's something interesting, this obviously is, is kidding, but that's license plating. I'm tracking pallets in, I'm tracking pallets around my warehouse where they're getting moved, I'm tracking pallets out. I can also track what's on that pallet. So I can see there's a quantity 20 on, on this pallet, I know which bin locations it on. So if I go into what we call kit management, put in the kit number and search, now I've got all the products, including the cereals and batches and the expiry dates that are on that pallet. Now I might want to take lines off that pallet by, by scanning and deleting, or I might want to split that kit as well. So it's full kitting or kit management, what, we, what other people might refer to as license plating as well. From here we have stock adjustments in and out, we have stock taking, uh, replenishment as well, and um, you know the ability to do transfers whether that's warehouse transfers or bin transfers now before i was talking about the label printing we've got label printing for almost all the functions including bin location labels sometimes customers prefer our system to print the bin location labels in the deliveries we we do have uh, where we call our transfer uh, transport management system we have run management we have route planning we have a history and pod dispatch as well so i've already put up a screen for pod dispatch now this is customizable as well where we can have the delivered quantity equal the uh, ordered quantity or the um, quantity equal the invoice quantity. We can take five photos. Um, see, I think that's been adjusted to 15 photos now per delivery. And these are custom fields here as well. So you can change these fields to, to be named what you need um, and change these to, to only have two or three extra fields on it. It's up to you. Now note, that kit label or the SSSC number you've got on your pallet, when you print during this picking or packing process, you can then scan those labels during the POD screen as well. So when we scan this, it can auto increment the items and the cartons. So we know how many cartons are meant to be delivered. There's a history and then, importantly, we have a, a freight management screen and I think this is getting used more and more from a number of our customers. So we've got the ability now to, to do this in, in Power BI and um, some other things like that. But customers are now saying to us, oh, I've picked and packed and I've got freight integration so I can see um, the freight integration. We can see who it's by, um, you know, the, the, the consignment number, what parcels we're sending on that freight. The other part to that is now, uh, once I finish this pick and I have a consignment number, I want to auto SMS or auto email the customer from the WMS and that is possible as well. So we have an SMS and, and an email feature that comes standard with our warehouse management solution. So if I need to email the, the SMS the customer for instance once the order is picked and the consignment number then that can be automatically done from the WMS. 
which is now helping the you know, customer service team for most of our customers. So that uh, can do that. And then obviously the manifest, there's a number of things that you can do with the system to do the, the manifesting. And uh, um, here's Star Trek, for instance. So we just, you know, I've just done a simple Star Trek manifest, no problems at all. And he might go and have a look at, uh, I can also, do some maintaining of cartons. So if I need to you know, maintain those cartons that we're um, sending and what they're doing, it's all there. And I might uh, see if there's anything else. Yep, there we go. There's another one with TNT Express. So we can see, so this gives us the exact information that we need. And if you're looking at your, um, you know, your invoice that you might be getting from your freight carrier, it's nice to know exactly what the warehouse had done. So whether it was a carton, whether it was a pallet, what weight it was, the length it's height. So you can work out whether you're getting charged the correct amount. I reckon the last mile delivery is probably the most popular thing or the most asked for thing in the last 18 months in this new world with the pandemic that's coming up. So the ability for our system to integrate with the last mile delivery with all the freight carriers and the next ability for our system to do automated SMSing as well, uh, which is the which seems to be coming up all the time, has helped our customers deliver a better solution from our warehouse management solution. All right. So if there's, as I said before, if there's any questions, just give us an email. Uh, feel free to call, visit our website, and on our uh, YouTube channel, you'll find another a number of um, videos, other videos that we've completed, but also a number of customer. Um, you know, case studies as well. Thank you. Bye.